Thank you so much for... Thank you, thank you. Okay, it worked. Paul? Paul Schreier knows where he's supposed to be, but I don't know. He'll be here in a second. So what's been the favorite thing that's happened this weekend for you guys? Meeting your Sure, sure. <laughs> okay, what's the second favorite thing that you've done at the con? <laughs> okay, okay. Perfect. Well, do you guys have any questions? Because I know like a lot of people have been coming to our table asking us questions, so we want to get in as many as possible. It was definitely right place, right time for me. I was doing another film and. I'll never forget that Jace, uh, Austin St. John walked on set, and it was an independent film, so there wasn't like any famous actors in it. So I was like starstruck when I first saw him, and Amy Jo Johnson as well. And then they, yeah, basically they said, do you want to be a Power Ranger? They saw my martial arts, and that was, that's how it happened for me. Ladies and gentlemen, it is Bulk. Actually, the funny thing is Steve and I and Johnny, we all went to an open call. And I just remember pulling up and there was like a line wrapped around. Like it looked like the line for yesterday when people were signing in. Um, thousands of people were there. And um, I just, it was like one of my, I'd gone to a couple of other auditions and I did like a commercial, but I was really new to acting. And I just remember going and auditioning, and then two days later they called us and said, hey, can you come to LA? We'd want you, you know, to audition for the producers. And I was like, absolutely. And then we auditioned, and by that afternoon, they told me, Johnny, and Steve to, that we were Rangers. So it was like four days, our lives changed. Awesome. Yeah. What about you? How did you get on the show? What have you done before? Check one, two. <laughs> Hi, morning-ish. <laughs> Um, I had an audition in Burbank, California, at the Saban, the Black Tower, as we called it. Yeah. <laughs> and um, I showed up a little bit early, and um, one of the writers was standing in for my role, punk number five. And he didn't, uh, like, he couldn't do the fighting thing, so Walter and I had, like, a fight rehearsal, because I was early for the audition, so I think once they saw that I could I could take a punch and fall down and go boom, then I think I was in. Movie magic. Skull came later. <laughs> yeah. And there you go. Um, they'd done the first movie, as you know, in Australia, um, and Shuki, one of the producers, just fell in love with Australia. So when um, Amy Jo wanted to leave, um, they did cast here, mm -hmm. and I first. How, how can you not find someone in America? But anyway, they didn't. And so they came to Australia and I didn't know the show and I auditioned. I had to do a, a martial arts routine, which was very embarrassing. <laughs> do it now. Oh, please. That's not, not good. Um, and, uh, and then a little scene. And then um, I had a final call with Shuki and I guess it was down to three of us and they picked me, which was wonderful. And next thing I was over here. So, living in America. Living in America. But I'd done a lot of theatre and, um, and I was acting in Australia for a couple of years before. In Australia, they have a very developed um, academy arts system. Yeah. And so if you want to be a performer in Australia, there's a path that you can take. And you were an accomplished graduate of that program and so many of our, your colleagues, your countrymen, are as well. Yeah, um, and it's, it's a really small industry there too, so everybody knows each other. It's, um, it's not cutthroat like Hollywood at all. Like we all. It's just a real community there. So it was very hard when I left the show because um, it was like, oh my gosh, you're, uh, you're like a small fish in a humongous pond. And totally. Yeah, it was big, big change. So 
so. <laughs> but I, I'll say it in American, a big change. Big change. <laughs> so you can understand me. <laughs> Steve, where are your socks, man? Yeah, what's going on here? Some, some fans stole them. Oh, you wow. <laughs> Is that all they got? <laughs> Sign my socks. Funky, funky socks for well, sale. If I can recap mine, because obviously I've told some people, but not everybody. I actually started out as an extra on the show. Uh, acting classes I was taking, somebody told me, oh, you need to sign up with this extra agency. They're casting all, you know, they're always sending people down to Power Rangers. And we knew it was starting to be a hot show. And actually, the first show I did as an extra, I was in the football episode with you. I was one of the punks in detention with you as an extra. And I did that on purpose, thinking, okay, I'm gonna stand out, I'll be a little different, instead of just all the kids walking through the hall. Well, there was some downtime in between shooting the scenes, and they said, hey, we need somebody that's about 5'8", with a size 10 shoe that'll fit this costume, why don't you try it on? Wow, wow. And I tried it on, walked around, and they said, oh yeah, it looks pretty good, how are you with the makeup? And I said, well, I've done theater before, so makeup doesn't bother me. They said, great, we're gonna call you Monday, we're shooting on location on Tuesday. Mind you, I hadn't watched the show yet, so I had no idea what was going on, they call me up, I go out to do that, the, the shoot, I get on location at 8 o'clock in the morning in the makeup trailer, 11 o'clock, we're done shooting. That's it. And I'm going, okay, this is cool. I get paid a little extra for being in the suit, and I'm done already. Mm. As I was leaving, I said, guys, you know, thank you, I appreciate this. If you guys need me for this monster again, let me know. And they said, what are you talking about? I'm like, well, if you need me for this monster or any other monsters, they said, no, no, you don't get it. This is a regular character on the show, you're it. And I'm like, well, okay, that'll work then. Just call me when you need me. And then after spending 18 hours in a stinky latex costume, we're like, what did I do? <laughs> exactly, Why exactly. Me? You know what's funny? We actually, like, we got to know the people we were, like, going up against. Like, we kind of spent the whole day together. They took us to eat and... Then we kind of were in a room in Burbank, and we actually got to know these people. So when they said it, I wanted to, like, cry, scream. I wanted to just be, because I was like, it's like, this is my big break. This is a TV show. Like, American it's actually, Idol. Yeah, it's like, you're actually on TV. <laughs> you actually get a chat. But I didn't, because I was like, I felt bad. Like, I didn't want to make them feel bad. And they were like, oh, congratulations. <laughs> and yeah. one girl kind of cried, and we were, like, Aww. consoling her. And, then they put us in a room by ourselves. We were like, oh, my God. Yeah. You know, we had a moment. It was like, but I'll never forget that because I remember seeing Steve and Johnny. Like, I, re I remember them, you know, but there was thousands of people, and the, it was almost like fate. Like, I just kind of saw them practicing or they were doing something. And then we all got on a plane. I was like, oh, those were those guys. And, I mean, I'll never forget that moment. Yeah, they, they did auditions. They were holding auditions in New York, in Florida, in Texas, and uh, L.A. Atlanta. Yeah, and uh, so so when uh, when we all met up in, in L.A., there were people from New York, people from, from Florida, and so on and so forth. And they were, like, pairing us up differently. They wanted to see who might look the best together. Right. And so, like, some like one scene I might have done with, like, a guy from New York and then a girl from, you know, Florida and one from California or whatever. And uh, so they had to kind of, like, figure it all out. But uh, yeah. it just so happened that we were all from Dallas. Yeah. And <laughs> they picked all the same people from the same place. So yeah. they, they um, paired us up. We were like one of the first groups. Like we went mm -hmm. in together and then they kind of switched us a little bit. And then we went in together again. We actually got to see each other audition, like which was crazy because at first you went in by yourself and you kind of uh -huh. like they saw everybody. Then they put you in a group. But we actually got to sit in, and I got to see what they did for their audition, and they got to see what yeah, I the, did. Yeah, the routines that we really did, cool. not, not, the, not the acting part, right. the routine part. Yeah, like yeah, they like, did this whole, like they had music, and they were doing martial arts, and I was dancing, and threw in yeah, a kick. Jared had like a really good dance, and I was like, <laughs> wow, that's, that's really good. On the floor. It was crazy good. Like, <laughs> when they got like down to the final, like did they, was it um, the same kind of breakdown? Like they had people look, look, look like you guys, or, yeah. So it, it was, was like, like, it was a different set of three, but it was like a different, different version, yeah. Yeah. But it was kind of like that, they kind of knew the look that I think they, they were going for. Yeah. Yeah, we were the only ones that knew like the, to reach behind the back for the Morphin. It's Morphin time. He told me that. Oh, I, yeah. I didn't know that. You, like, oh, Steve cool. was all so, knowing. Yeah, like, Steve told like me. That, so. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You're in the know. You're the know. <laughs> Good to know. I was super excited to come over here. Oh, that was crazy. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
the day no I got hired comments. and the day I got hired. We <laughs> 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 fired. <laughs> All in one. <laughs> we didn't see him very often. Yeah, I don't ever really I, remember meeting him. Yeah, I mean, the other producers would be around, but I saw him the day that I got the job, and then I saw him when we had the big premiere for the movie, and he didn't know who I was. So that probably was like the worst moment, because I'd been on the show almost a year. So I was like, oh, wow. he had no clue who I was. I, I got to know him a little bit because of um, Shuki, but um, I, was, I was closer to Shuki than I was to Haim, but, um, but uh, he, he, by the time the show had kind of gotten established, he just, all he wanted was the money, I think, at that point. I think I, I, think I met Haim one time. We were invited to Shuki's house for some, some event, and I remember just walking in, and I was still, I mean, keep in mind, I was still on the show, I was little. I, I just remember, like, seeing all the Power Rangers it, he had them on mannequins, or he had them on, like on a doll, or he had them all in his house. It was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, Haim's always been uh, very kind to me, and uh, you know I wouldn't have had the experience to be, uh, you know, to play my character without him. So um, I would never say anything negative about him. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't so kind. To However. <laughs> The day I first met him, we were shooting the promo pilot when I had the big hair, when we were with uh, the Yellow Ranger, and with, uh, when I was punk number five. And he called his wife, Cheryl, who's a wonderful woman, a great author. He was like, Cheryl, Cheryl, come over here. You have to meet this guy. He's an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my hi. <laughs> she was like, he doesn't look really silly. Hi. Why did they change it from like the belt morphers to the wrist morphers? It's all about the Japanese show. Yeah, yeah. whatever the Japanese came up yeah. with, we had to follow suit because yeah. you know, we bought all their footage. So. Mm, yep. Yeah. <laughs> this guy was the one that asked a question. He didn't let me pass him up so far. Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, green shirt, green lantern. <laughs> I was a huge fan of the show before I was on the show, and then once I got it on the show, it was it was amazing. I, I, words can't describe how I feel or towards it, because still to this day, like we just went to Jason Frank's house, and I'm still like, dude, that's Jason Frank. I'm in his house, <laughs> you know. So it's just awesome, man. I just got kicked out of Jason Frank's house <laughs> by Paulie. <laughs> Oh, we stole everything. Yeah. <laughs> These guys are smart. They stole stuff. I didn't I steal anything. But you know, hey, it, seriously, Karen, it, like, if, if I'm like, you know, running with some robot thing on my head for 18 hours, You're like, take it? I'm taking it. <laughs> <laughs> I like would give it back. Oh, guys, yes. here. <laughs> no, I, didn't I didn't think. I should have taken everything. <laughs> I would take it. I don't think I had to steal anything. I was just a kid. They were like, here, give him that. Uh, yeah, they weren't going to use any of your stuff yeah. ever again. <laughs> Totally. Yeah. Well, they, they couldn't use your costume again, right? Because you were so little. Yeah, that's true. Tiny little Blake. I think that varied, right? Like episode to episode. It just kind of depend, depended upon what the story, like whatever the writers came up with, and then they had to kind of like piece it together. And if they didn't have, if it didn't make sense, then they'd obviously get the American crew to kind of, you know, cause sometimes you'll see it go back and forth. All the Megazord stuff was the Japanese footage. Yeah, yeah, early on. And then the movie was amazing. I was like, I'd never been out, well, I'd never been out of the country at that point. So it was like the first time out getting a passport. And I mean, we were supposed to be there, I think was it like three months? And we ended up being there like six months. and. You know, I mean, it was just, it was like a whole nother world. I mean, I don't know if you've been able to, you know, travel, but Australia is so beautiful, and it was just really cool. The food was weird. Sorry. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> food was very the right weird. I know. I, if I knew Kat, she probably would have taken me to all the cool places, but <laughs> it was it was really, I mean, I, I, I got a little homesick there, but I, I remember just being awestruck every day because it was the most beautiful place you'll ever see. 
Uh, it wasn't like going, you know, to the Middle East or something where it's a really foreign experience. There's a lot of, an, an, you know, analogous kind yeah. of stuff yeah. in Australia. There's, you know, um, one-time fealty to the queen, um, <laughs> uh, east to west migration by people yeah. of dubious origin, yeah. oppression <laughs> of indigenous peoples. So there's a lot of kind of, there's a lot of there's like- There's a lot of good things there's, too. <laughs> <laughs> there's roundabouts over there. Roundabouts? Yeah, we have a lot of roundabouts. Like, you where yeah. you drive, like no traffic lights and you have to yield and it's yeah, kind it's of like, weird to get- it's, Yeah, I've never, I'd never been to, I was like terrified I wouldn't have drove there. Jason Murray, Always to the right. Jason Murray bought right. a car in Australia. He did, I remember Remember that, that Ford Falcon? And then he was like, don't worry. I can drive it, and, I, and of course I'm on the what I think is the driver's side. I'm going, where's the? Uh, <laughs> over a crazy dude. I'm, uh, that's crazy. I remember that. Yeah, he didn't even sell that car. He abandoned that car at the hotel. Because <laughs> remember, he was trying to smuggle that cow skull through airport security. Yeah. Did you get it through? Yeah. No, he didn't. No, because you <laughs> can't take dead things on an airplane. <laughs> Well, we couldn't, there was a lot of stuff in, in uh, Zhu Rangers and Cocker Rangers that we couldn't use on our show. You know that whole thing like the Green Ranger kills his parents? <laughs> you know, there was, exactly. And there's, so there's all kinds of stuff that we couldn't use. So, I mean, we used what we could and then we shot the rest and then they stuck bulk and skull in. It's kind of like a caulking. Right. Yeah, it's like really <laughs> Well, it, it varied. It went season to season. Some seasons you can be really true and, and fidelis, and other seasons you can't, like, like Megaforce. You know, the two Japanese series that we're mashing together, like Angels and Pirates. I mean, Pirates are cool, but it's Nickelodeon. You can't shoot guns on Nickelodeon. So they have, they have an issue. They're, they're having to, like, make a very gentle amalgam, you know? Yeah. So, I mean, sometimes it was easy, and sometimes it's... I mean, ask Jonathan. Jonathan's like, oh, Paulie, I'm trying to make the show. I can't do it. <laughs> uh, yeah. Very difficult script writing sometimes. What's up, man? When I came on it, it already was. So, I mean, I, you know, I came on season two, so, you know. I don't know. When we saw it the first time, we were like, we're done in three months. <laughs> Now, I love Giant Robot, and I love, I love, I love Manga May, but, like, honestly, we saw it, and we were like, because, come on, remember the opening, the first season Zord sequence, where, like, there's a Megazord on a stick, <laughs> and you can tell somebody's like, in the Megazord, <laughs> when he's, like, going down the, the outdoors with the smoke, and you're like, oh, God. So, I mean, it, honestly, but... And it was really stereotypical, too. It, like, it was, Walter always talks about, totally, what's up, what's up, what's I up, know, what's up? <laughs> so ridiculous. There were a lot of things that we were like, eh. Yeah, but, but the show was number one worldwide in one week. Yeah, wow. Exactly. I mean, I remember when I had come on doing extra work, I was filming, it was the last, we were wrapping the last 40th episode. We were doing the last five episodes. And I remember as an extra hearing, oh, guys, they, they want 10 more episodes. The network just called. we got to crank out 10 more. we got to get them done now. The next week, they start filming those 10 episodes. It's like, um, guys, actually, they want 20 new episodes. So these 10 and 10 more, get it done. And it's just kind of like, at that point, as an extra, I'm going, I'm keeping everything I possibly can. I kept all my sides, all my call sheets, because I knew this, is, this was going to be big. I didn't know 20 years later it was going to be big, but I'm just thinking, I'm never going to get a chance to do this again and be on a hit show. This is cool. Nostalgia is a hell of a drug. <laughs> Actually, I, I think we were on a hiatus from the movie we were. to do the TV show. Yeah, they gave us like two weeks off, and we ended up using that to, um, to film. But yeah, it was like long days, long nights. I mean, we were in that 
construction pit for like a month. Oh, man. It felt like, I mean, literally, that whole construction fight, you know, that was like a month of being in the same place. Oh. I mean, it was like they shot it from every angle known to man. Um, and it just, I mean, it really, like, we had just gotten on the show, Steve and I, maybe two months prior. So we thought we'd really gone through it as far as, like, we got thrown on the show, and they were like, okay, we got two months, let's get 20 episodes. And, I mean, we were shooting six days a week. Like, it was a lot. Um, but then going to a movie set, it's, we're working on the same thing all day. Like, the pace totally changed, and we were, like, bored and going yeah. crazy. And so we found ways to amuse ourselves. <laughs> The little kid first has a question, and then we got one in the back behind that. Little man, what's your question? Sleeveless in Seattle. <laughs> I didn't. Keep your morphers? Is that what you said? Did we keep our morphers? Is that what you said? I want a morpher. I do too. Yeah, me too. <laughs> they didn't let us keep them. I got a taco. Those at Toys R Us. <laughs> <laughs> Our morphers were actually the toys that you they guys were. could buy at the store. Like, yeah. they were. Well, because you guys would break them all the time. Because <laughs> you had true. to keep them in your pants. Every time you sit down on the juice bar, I'm like, crack. Oh, oh. broke another morpher. <laughs> there goes the morpher. <laughs> yeah. Is that the black shirt? It was the first one to really break through. I mean, that was yeah. primary. Yeah, I mean, and we were filming right next to VR Troopers, too. Totally. Which, uh, that still, VR Troopers started a little bit later, you know, I mean, after he had a hit with Rangers. But, you know, Haim tried, Haim tried to do a thing called Bioman for, like, a number of years, which was the same thing, you know, just, like, bashing off the Japanese footage of some show. And, and it was like he was in a silver costume. It was kind of like Ultraman-ish. Mm. And I, I think that pilot's actually been aired and, it, you know, he has, like, a really bad robot sidekick. Just really bad. <laughs> you know, the thing that made the show successful is, I mean, frankly, stereotypes are what they are for a reason. It's because they resonate with us, you know? The fat, funny guy. You know what I mean? The African-American guy who's a good dancer. Like, like we personally had issues with some of that stereo stereotypification. However, there's a reason why, and it's because it's the lives that we live in our culture. Like, the, these are social mores they are kind of these little slices of life so as much as we were like oh the jock and the and the girl in pink you know it did give everyone an opportunity to be Connect someone to, someone. to be yeah. someone in the show you know and yeah. that's and and then there was the the teamwork thing which was a super cool you know thread and then there was bulk and skull and burning things for fun <laughs> I think because it gave everybody somebody. Like, I mean, people will come up to me and they go, oh, you know, I identified with you. Or, totally. I, I mean, it's the little things, but it's like everybody had somebody. And the reality was usually superheroes were adults and we were young, you yeah. know? So it kind yeah. of, it made it more, I attainable. think, accessible. attainable. Yeah, totally like people man. aspired Absolutely. to, you know, <laughs> be a Power Ranger when they got older, you know? So it was like each person, they try to make us all a little different. And I think that's what worked, you know? It was harder for later casts right. because they now were riffing off of something that had become a social phenomenon. I mean, talk to Roger Velasco about trying to differentiate yourself from the, you know, it's, it's right. hard. You right. just, you end up almost playing your predecessor in, in some ways. Bit, right. You were lucky that, you mean, you, you were able to break that mold because of, you know, your obvious, incredible, stunning beauty. And, and your really weird accent. I love you. <laughs> yeah, and your creepy accent. <laughs> I was happy to have a pink, pink ranger that I could look in the eye. You know? <laughs> What's she up, AJ? Tiny. How's it going? Nice to see she you. Was, she was tiny. Yeah, in the movie, them, they had Amy and I stand next to each other, and I was like, she is so t petite. She was, like, came up literally under my arm. She was so adorable. Fold her up. Fold her up and put her in your pocket. <laughs> or ship her off on a gymnastics thing. All the way in the back on the end, yeah. Tournament, whatever it was. Fine. 
in the beginning, we had to. Like, in the beginning, when we first came on, we had civilian fights. So we'd always have, like, we'd probably have two fights an episode. You'd have a civilian fight, and then you had, like, a fight in your suit. Um, but anytime it was us fighting, that was us, you know? And then we started, they started getting flat, huh? Absolutely. I know this guy These can. guys can definitely do it. I ain't doing it. But, um, <laughs> yeah, I'll do it in my skirt. If I got jumped in the hallway, I'm sure I could pull something out. I know I could. Um, but no, but we had to do it. So it was, I mean, it was exciting for us, for me especially, because I wasn't a martial artist, and these guys were definitely martial artists. So I had to, like, learn real fast. Um, but luckily, I was a dancer, and I could get it, get it really quickly. But once we started getting complaints that it was too violent and this and that, and I think the guy from VR Troopers got hurt in a fight, so then they pulled away and, you know, they kind of wanted it to always be, you know, the costume fights a monster so that, you know, we weren't fighting, you know, and kids wouldn't fight. So. I, I talked to some of the actors that are on the show, Samurai right now, Mega Force and stuff, and they told me that, like, I don't know if this was back in the day if it was the same, but they put you through, like, a two-week boot camp of learning karate. That's what, that's what I was told. We did. They were like, okay, you got the part. Okay, tomorrow you're shooting. Learn that. You got 20 minutes. Go. <laughs> they were, they were, because the girls were, um, Amy Jo was an, a really amazing gymnast, so she was able to do a lot of flips and stuff. But um, I think, wasn't Twee a dancer too? Yeah, yeah Twee and Karen and me and Nakia were all dancers. And, so an, and, and an engineer. Oh, wow. wow. Smart girl. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, Twee Trang was a civil engineer before she decided wow. to try acting. Wow. wow. She's smart, beautiful, and talented. She, she was. Yeah. Um, but they would choreograph, the stunt guys would choreograph us to be more, work with our dance skills more so than our martial arts skills, I think. I used to eat as a rehearsal to eat. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, you have to, you know, these, you know, you see the guys walking around as Klingons yesterday? <laughs> they were like, they didn't care about people. They were just screaming, well, see this thing? It's, that's a chewing muscle. Yes. <laughs> I'm working it right I now. I, I think I had to take some cowering lessons. That was about <laughs> it. I have the same name, so no problem there. Yeah. <laughs> I think the crew occasionally would call you by your character names yeah. like yeah. over and over and over. Actually, one time Walter, Walter and I were um, hanging out because we're friends and we hang out. And he was, uh, we were at some, at some party or whatever, and I, and I was introducing him to another friend of mine. He goes, "This is Zach." <laughs> <laughs> and I, and, and, oh, but he didn't man. realize he thought that the guy I was introducing him to was named Zach. So he was like, hey, Zach, what's up, man? And he goes, "My name's Ben." <laughs> I just called him. I just called him Zach. Every convention, though, somebody comes up and is like, Aisha, okay, so it's so nice to meet you. And you're like, <laughs> but it's all good. I used to get called Babu walking down the street all the time. I don't know. <laughs> I know. I mean, your wife is sitting right over there, and I know she calls you that as a term of endearment, you know. <laughs> Babu. Remember, kid show, we need to keep, keep it on the down low. <laughs> oh, wait, no, this guy, this guy back there, yeah. Yeah, with your hand up, right? Yeah. Conventions, I think. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I think you know we were, we were kind of like sheltered, really. You know, I mean, we got some kids that came through the Make a Wish Foundation and stuff like that, and that was, you know, that was always kind of inspirational and stuff. But we never really knew the impact, you know, until we started coming to these, to the cons, you know, and people would come up and to our table and say stuff, you know. All of the Bulk and Skull fans were actually in detention. <laughs> <laughs> so only when they would get out of detention later, you know, would we have a chance to meet them. <laughs> Differences are celebrated in our cast. Like, that's one of the things that, I mean, we're such a varied group of people. Like, how many rangers have I worked with? Like, I, I, I would need two buses <laughs> to put all of them on. And, and, but the thing about us is that we're, you know, we get to play unique individuals and it's, it's a really, it's a great gift, you know, as an actor 
and, and almost a pitfall too. For somebody to say, you get to play a character that's really close to yourself, embodying all the things that make you wonderful and a few of the things that make you kind of a weird person. But so it's a, it's a blessing and a curse. Like we, I mean, a lot of actors, like we were joking yesterday about, um, you know, when I was uh, younger, like kids would come up to me and like kick me in the shin because Bulk was like a bully, right? <laughs> well, um, you imagine if you're the guy that played Dexter, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, in the pantheon of acting roles, you know, I don't want to be on the registry list of freaky dicky people. You know what I mean? So I think we've, we've been lucky. We, we had cool characters to play, man. Yeah, no worries, brother. It's like the CIA. One last mission. I don't do that. The answer is my colleagues will not go back. No, they won't, because they have lives. They're busy now, sorry. <laughs> we, we, well, the right the circumstances. Cir all the circumstances yeah, were right, right we'd go back, but. Huh? If all the circumstances were right. Right, under Put the right, right circumstance, that? and I think if all of us came together, I think that would be a special moment. Yeah. That's what I envision if we ever did it. Like, let's do it together and really create that memory for you. Dark reboot, man. Yeah, like I think it would be great. That would be an awesome moment. You, you. Who was your favorite prank? Prank? I put, I put I gel know. in uh, Narvi's boots. I don't remember <laughs> doing <laughs> pranks to people that much. I didn't, After you. personally. We well, got pranks. We didn't do the pranky. We were on the show with Jason David Frank, who pranked us every chance he Jason got. Jason David Prank? Yeah. We had no, yeah. yeah, we had no chance to prank, because he was already pranky. Yeah. <laughs> he, he did. Like, <laughs> it was like, who was going to get it today? <laughs> Jason and I got in so much trouble on that set, you guys. One time we decided to bring all of our swords from home, and oh, we stabbed them through the talent, the talent hallway, <laughs> the wall, and Amy Jo was in her room putting on makeup, and a sword, like, came through the wall. <laughs> She's like... That is not cool. <laughs> I'm trying to prepare. <laughs> so cut to me and Narvi with spackle. We have to fill all the holes. And then he was like, it looks good, so. Paul, but uh, the color is not right. Uh, here's the white paint. <laughs> oh, cold-blooded. Oops. My favorite was, was the Wild Wild West episode, just because we kind of got to be a character within the character. Um, I don't know what my least favorite was. I, I kind of enjoyed them all. I guess the one I don't remember. <laughs> That's probably the least favorite. <laughs> oh, when I got sent to Africa, that was pretty lame. I just thought it was lame. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, thanks. Uh, for, me, for me, it was the wedding episode, definitely. I mean, literally trying to fit 20 monsters in that space. I mean, it was like bumper cars. You couldn't take a step without bumping into another one. So, like, oh, they're all dancing. Yeah, okay. That, if that's what you want to call it, that's fine. But no, that was a lot of fun because I think I was like, I got like the most lines over those kind of episodes, too, and got to do some stuff that I didn't usually do. So that was kind of cool. Yeah, I, enjoyed, I enjoyed pretty much working every day. <laughs> I loved it. Um, I think my least favorite would have to be the one where I left uh, space. Yeah, where they all left me behind and I'm just sitting there like this. <laughs> That's riveting. But I'm, that but I'm a kid. Take me with you. I think my favorite would be um, when I, the, my first episodes. Um, when you but, were <laughs> yeah, when I was holding you at the yeah. pet place. Yes. Um, but it was also scary because I was now going to be taking on a role of someone that was so loved and popular. So um, that was always, I was always like a little bit, okay, is this yeah, going to work? Yeah, that was the one that was hard for me too, actually, you know? Yeah. Because a lot of people were mad. Yeah. They were like, what? Yeah. Yeah. So we're very happy you guys like us now. <laughs> Thank you. Because <laughs> we were very nervous. And like we were in Australia, and it was it was like a whole year behind. What, yep. It was like a yeah. whole year behind. So it was coming out there. They were like, "Trainee, trainee." And I was like, "Yes, yeah." Hi. <laughs> I took it. Any, anything. I was like, "I'll take it." I filled huge shoes. 
Yeah. You know? Yeah. He chooses that. They didn't even have cable in Australia when we went there. No. They had three channels. That's three three channels on the whole TV. And, and the next February, they're like, hey, did you hear? We're going to get the cable. Foxtel. Foxtel. <laughs> really? The cable? The cable. They were like, it was a different work? world to me. Like, it was crazy. I'd watch, um, we'd get up at like three or four in the morning to be on set by five, and I'd watch General Hospital before I went. Like, they had General Hospital on it. Brutal. Yeah, like, the from the 80s or something. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, that's it. You know, it's like, Australia is, like, about 15 years back from us, like... Not now, though. No, no not now, but back then, yeah. yeah. So, it's like, if you picture, like, what America was like in 1979 or 1980, that's what it was like in 95. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The fashion was funny. Because <laughs> yeah. people would, like, go out on the town and you'd be like, you're wearing that? Right. <laughs> <laughs> Like my dad threw that away like ten Didn't, years ago. Well, Didn't a lot the of the girls fashion, that had, like those midriff totally shirts, like yeah. every Dude, woman showed their stomach. Like the, the, yes. the, the acid wash jeans yes. thing. People were like, Yeah, yeah. And we were like, <laughs> Well, they follow the fashions more from London than they do from America, actually. So oh, we actually, were probably ahead. They're probably of a you. little bit more ahead, to be honest. Yes. Yeah. I'm mean, too zazzy for this show. Guys, nice. I'm the new Blue Ranger. <laughs> I always like the boogie with the bear line. Yeah. Yeah. The other good. one was, guys, you guys are the Power Rangers? Oh, oh we said that too in ours. <laughs> yeah. Power transfer, we said that. My favorite line is, well, it's a kind of a mutual line with Jason. I want my mommy. <laughs> yeah. I want your mommy. <laughs> That's awesome. How does that get by B B S and P? I don't know. <laughs> Which is broadcast standards and practices. The censor. We got lots of letters from those people. Yeah, actually, my favorite my favorite line is uh, is David Yost's line. Actually, he's like, "Oh my God, it's a giant pachinko head." <laughs> Too, I think. <laughs> really, no one's going with the every show line, you guys, where's Tommy? I mean, that was a joke as to how many episodes, how they would fit that into every episode Especially after a while. Tommy, Tommy, oh, every five seconds. I was like, oh, come on. <laughs> I <can't> defend myself. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, the little guy's got another question. Yes. Oh, he's just, maybe he likes raising his hand. <laughs> he sees everybody raising their hand. Um, da, da. <laughs> ninja powers? Oh, wow. The ninjetti. Wasn't that to do with ninja? We got it twice. <laughs> yeah, right? Once in the movie and once in um, the series. Mm -hmm. We were lucky. Ninja powers. <laughs> they were fun, the ninja, ninja storyline. That fun. was the ninja encounter? Is that what it was? No, that was no, that was in the beginning, right? I, can't, I don't know. I can't yeah, remember. I it's, it's all a blur. Trying. So many rangers. <laughs> so many rangers. In the hat. Matching. <laughs> uh, I was wondering what your favorite monster was. Ivan Ooze. Uh, hello. Right here, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Ivan Ooze. Hi, Tim. Ivan Ooze. <laughs> I was just watching Hot Fuzz earlier, because um, like, it was just on the TV. And Ivan Ooze was in it. I forgot about that. Mr. Freeman? Yeah. Yeah, yeah he was played Jones. like the preacher. He was the priest, you know? Was cool. It was, uh... He also played it? the villain in Iron Eagle 3, in which he had a very small chihuahua. And Raiders <laughs> of the Lost Ark, was he in that? Yeah, he was Raiders of the Lost Ark, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I love cool. Rita and Zed. Yeah. I mean, they're classic Power Ranger. Yeah. Ivan Ivan Ooze was like... He was like I'm sinister but funny. He's like, ooh, where's okay. my autograph book? Yeah. That's yeah. funny, man. That, that is very funny. He was such a cool guy, like such a cool man. We were kind of in awe of him because we'd all seen Raiders. So After we finished shooting the movie, I had the opportunity to be his docent and go to American Repertory Theater really? in uh, Boston, Massachusetts and carry his luggage while he did uh, Prospero in The Tempest. Oh, wow. So I got to see every production, every performance of the show, and, wow. and then I got to make him dinner. Then I got yeah. to clean up. 
<laughs> carry his peon. luggage. I was his docent. I was like his boy. It was awesome. That's what a, awesome. and a super Very cool, cool dude, a great a actor. Nice man. All the like, like you, there's some episodes where you saw her underwear. And I was like, we'd get all these notes and the girls and put shorts underneath their skirts. And like, I mean, there was like, you know, moments where we were cold. That made it. <laughs> I was you know always I'm surprised saying? Diva Tox was, um, made it because in the movie, I mean, she had some breastuses popping out all over the place. <laughs> Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, she was for the dads. I used to always say she was for the dads. You mean, you mean, Gab yeah. you mean Gabriella? Or you mean no, in, uh, uh, um, what was oh, it? The Hillary. Oh, oh, right, yes. Hillary. Or Gabriella, too, Hillary in the first Shepherd movie. Turner, she was yeah. barely clothed as well. Yeah. Poor so, girl. Oh. But the guys, you all liked it, right? <laughs> I liked Gabriella, too, yeah. Don't see him. <laughs> She's a beautiful, beautiful all lady. All the guys love like, Gabriella. Oh, wait, <laughs> She's like, They were all like, She's on set. <laughs> she's really cool, though. She's so beautiful, and she has no idea how beautiful she is, too. She's incredibly humble, so... Yeah. yeah. Her abs are rocking. Rock, rock hard abs. Real body, yeah. Real. So, the Xenomorphers in Star Wars, how Oh, we used to miss all the time. In, yeah. Uh -huh. that was so they have great. outtakes of that, like, at the end of all the shows, where people yeah. would miss, we'd miss, you know? Punch each other. <laughs> yeah. we, we would always cheat it and just go right behind it, so it looked like the key went in when you would work. <laughs> and you know, the, the turbo one, wasn't that a joke? Like, you and J Johnny and Jason were playing around, you're like, oh yeah, let's pretend we're driving a car. And then they were like, that's good, let's use that. <laughs> for the, for the oh yeah, no, that, I, I don't know, because it was an in-turbo, so I didn't know. Oh, it must have been Johnny. I wouldn't know either. <laughs> you were in I was an in-turbo. I got replaced by some little kid, man. Oh. Sorry. Who's like bigger than me that's now? What, so that's how the cookie up. crumbles. <laughs> He's bigger than me now, so I should probably be quiet. Yeah. He wanted to leave. It wasn't like he was fine. You wanted to leave. Well, it was the fact that no one could fill his shoes, so they had to make a smaller costume, put a smaller person that's in his exactly place. That's exactly right. Yeah, that concept, <laughs> that concept was pretty dope. <laughs> yeah. Nobody says dope. I just did. I say it all the time. <laughs> Are you wearing that shirt again? Oh, no, you're not. You, you took it from me last night. Right, I, 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 de, I de cheated your sleeves. I take that cheetah print off. Never wear cheetah print again. That's me, the fashion police. Yes. Zord? I didn't know what a Zord was until recently, actually. <laughs> the Red Dragon Thunder Zord. That was a good one. Saber Two Tiger was cool. Dragon Sword was the bomb. Yeah. Yeah. Dragon Sword cool. was dope. <laughs> it was just cool. And you know what I love about about you know Godzilla movies is that they just destroy Tokyo every time. Like I always wanted when I was young, I wanted to have a birthday party where somebody just built me Tokyo, and then I just would like to destroy Tokyo. <laughs> Like, but what if it was cake or gingerbread or something? I don't know. But you know, like they they do the slow motion and and the building like falls over in like four pieces. <laughs> but it's still so cool, man. And the dragon sword coming up out of the bay was pretty awesome. The bubbling water and you know, that was an awesome, awesome creature. Great robot. <laughs> what you talking about, Willis? Well, they, they had lines for us. Um, there wasn't very many lines per person. It was just sort of like, you know, like a random number generator. It's like, okay, we'll make her say this line, make him say this line. It wasn't, it wasn't a lot of character development. But the one thing that was cool is they did let us choreograph our own street clothes fight scenes, which, is, which I liked doing. And that was kind of my favorite part of the show. And when they took all the fight scenes away, I was kind of bored after that. <laughs> That was pretty rare, actually, yeah. yeah. They didn't have us in the helmets very much. The only time we'd ever be in the helmet is if we were taking it off. Yeah. That, yeah. That's pretty much it, because the rest of the time, 
that would be second unit filming. Exactly. Like the same. We, we were filmed always at the same behind time schedule. As us. Yeah. Yeah. And and that's the, the reason. movie yeah. like went over, and we were always behind the gun. Like we were always ten episodes behind. So. They had to have two units shooting just to get the show done on time. So that's why they had to have stuntmen in their yeah. costumes. Yeah. It's not like they can't. Plus, I don't know if I could do yeah. flips with that thing on, man. I, I, oh, I, yeah. I give props to the to the Japanese stunt crew, They're man. Amazing. They are they are amazing because like. It's hard to breathe in those things. It's hard to see out of them. And these guys are doing all these amazing stunts and wire gags and flips and kicks and choreographed scenes. Never complaining. Like, yeah, ready. I mean, yeah, they, no, they never complained either. But, I mean, I could never, I would never be able to do with those You know, what's, in, what's interesting about our show is that even though, like, the ownership of the show changed with Disney and then back to Saban and, and, and so many actors and so many directors, producer change, like, all complete, but you know who never left after they showed up? The Alpha, Alpha stunt, stunt team. Alpha stunt. The Japanese stuntman, Kuichi Sakamoto and his crew, and Yuji-san, they are still there to this day yeah. in New Zealand making the show, because they're the heart of it, really. Yeah. yeah. You know, And you know like all the women are actually dudes, right? Yeah. yeah. My guy was so amazing. In the beginning, on, we they, had it. They're so oh, good. Yeah. I'm yeah. like, Kazu, you're so hot. Put the helmet on. Yes. <laughs> Dude, seriously, Kaz, Kaz would do this thing and he would be, he would be like, <laughs> I'm like, like, dude, I just saw you 10 minutes ago. You're like, what up? Yeah, yeah. And they stand, they stand. They stand, like, they turn into the girls. It's awesome. Yeah. It's Japanese. They really are, they really are good, man. They I really, really give props to that crew. Inner Japanese woman. Yeah. Well, I remember in the beginning, that they had actually, they had one female stunt person that actually did age in. I can't remember what her name was. She was only there like through the first season and she was like the roughest, toughest, scariest looking thing you ever saw. You mean Bridget Baby Doll Riley? Yes, Bridget, Bridget. thank Bridget you. Bridget was my, thank you. Was my <laughs> she, she did my stunts as well and she was like the kickboxing champion. Yep. Yep. Like the, like she was a champion at that moment. She was a, a Muay Thai yeah. champion. Yes. Yeah. And she was in our group with Mr. With Eric Betts, yeah. you know, for like one scene. She was like, yeah. <laughs> Bridget's awesome. We had a couple, yeah, we had a couple of really cool girls. <clears throat> What was the second part? Favorite oh. <laughs> I would be yellow. I, I don't want to be any the other color. sleeveless was his favorite costume. <laughs> <laughs> mine was the red plaid sleeveless. <laughs> and mine were like the yellow bobby socks and matching headband. <laughs> no, I remember they used to go shopping and they would buy all white clothes and they would dye it yellow because there was never any, there was not that much yellow in the world. But, um, and pink as well, like they had to kind of like specialize our clothes. It was kind of hard to find those kind of specific colors. Um, but my favorite costume was, the best looking one was um, the movie costume, but the most comfortable was the nin ninja costume. Yeah, it was just not as revealing as the spandex. <laughs> Well, I remember it was funny when they were talking about bringing extras down. They're like, okay, you, you know, you got to wear stuff with no logos, no this, no that, and no solid blue, no solid red, no solid... And it's like, guys, what's left? I mean, what are we supposed to wear? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <Brown>. <laughs> <laughs> There's a whole bunch of colors that no costume designer in television or film would want you to wear. And the, and the reason was not because all of our principals were in those colors. That's part of it. But there, and when you were shooting on film there's certain saturations of blues and blacks and reds that will mess up the camera. You know the moiré patterns that you get sometimes in video, like you'll, so basically they, they couldn't because it was like an epileptic seizure thing. <laughs> they didn't, like they could not use certain colors because it wouldn't film right. It's weird. I never really, honestly, I still don't really quite get that because right. I'm like, whatever, shoot it. <laughs> but I know. Who knows all they're pretty serious about that. They were very serious. No. <laughs> I mean, we the schedule was like, like I said, we were so behind 
it was just like, let's just get it done, let's get it. And then you'd become, like, you'd get your sides that morning, you'd learn your lines that day, you'd say it that afternoon, you would forget it that evening. Like, it was like, I mean, you kind of train yourself. Yeah. You kind of just, we were just trying to make our day. Like, that was the thing. Every day, make your day, make your day. And try to finish a little early so you can, like, you know. I did feel like to eat. they did kind of try to bring in a little bit of our personality um, to the character, like, once they got to know us a little bit. Um, like I told you, they dan she was a great dancer and, and a singer, and, and I sung, and they, Angel Grove High was such an amazing song. I mean, amazing. to this Tart day, chopper. it's like so touching. <laughs> Tear jerker, ch chopper. <laughs> no, but they did try to kind of bring a little bit of our, of our personality to the character. I got to do whatever I wanted, so yes. <laughs> yeah, they, yeah. Had to, they had the, like, the most fun. They did. You guys did get to do. They got to like, actually act. There was nothing act. they could do that was too over the top, too bad. Like, it was just like... Yeah, we were, we were lucky for sure. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. Any questions? How about you yeah. in the back, sir? No, there's, def there's definitely an adjustment period. No, no. You know what? Honestly, not that. I mean, it's, it's, like, it's like any veterans in the room? Any war veterans? Any Iraqi war veterans? Thank you. Thank, Thank you for you. your service. Thank yes. You. you know, that's a thing that, it, you know. That's a hero. That's yeah. a true hero. So, but we have our own version of PTSD in show business, and it's called Nobody's Gonna Bring You Coffee Anymore. <laughs> And, and that's an important, it's important, it's pretty easy to make the transition. It is a transition now. When you realize, okay, I'm going to go to work at the Walt Disney Company, like in my case, after I left the show. And then I was like, do you want some cream in your coffee, sir? And I'm walking away going, man. But it's good, because, it, because you're a human being. And sometimes yeah. you're on top, and sometimes you're not. Yeah. You know, and it's got to be, it's got to be a person and realize that, right, Blake? Nope. <laughs> it's harder, it was harder for you because being a young man, like yeah. it's harder for, you know, that's, that's why there's all these stories about child actors that have so many issues because they, they didn't have any coping skills before they got famous. Right. You know, so fortunately we were adults mostly, mostly, you know, before we did it. I think the beautiful thing though is we're all kind of part of this family. Like it doesn't matter if we see each other every day or if we see each other once or twice a year. And being surrounded by really great people, it's, it's cool. I mean, and, and then coming to this, it's like, you know, we get, we, I get, I think it's, I get more out of this than I did when I was actually on the show because totally. I was so distracted and so busy and you wanted to do well. Here, it's like, we get to enjoy it. You guys tell us your stories on, you know, how the show changed your life. You know, so, I mean, I think we kind of, it's like, it's gone full circle now. So, you know it feels that, really good. You know, I mean, y'all have kids. Some of y'all, and and but I have I have no children, and all of my friends are starting to like. They're Narvi just had his baby, so everyone's having babies. So uh, somebody recently asked me, you know, don't you really want to have a kid? And I'm like, I, I think I have 10 million children, right. <laughs> and they're all over the world, you know. That's true. Well, I mean, and I never had to change a single diaper. Think about it. <laughs> No, but about what you said, Karen, about this being a family. Like I said, I haven't seen you guys in 17, 18 years, yeah. except for this guy who I never had the pleasure of working with. But seeing these guys again, they're all like, oh, yeah, hey, dude, welcome back. Ooh, let's, let's help out with this. Hey, you got to get to more conventions. I mean, they've treated me like I never left, and I, I just want to tell you guys that I appreciate it. And thank you guys so much. Oh, no worries. Yeah. yeah, it's a good power It's because family. your wife threatened to kick my ass. <laughs> thank you, then, honey. <laughs> <laughs> I do real estate, so I sell houses and stuff. Um, training in karate. Yep. Still acting. Still acting. Still acting. About to get new headshots taken. I'm a photographer. <laughs> wow, what a segue. <laughs> right. Um, that, I mean, we're always, I think once you're in a creative place, you never let it go. I think everybody kind of took a break at some point. Um, but getting back into acting, still pounding the pavement, I got into writing and producing and um, you know, just kind of bouncing around Hollywood, you know, you got to pay your bills. <laughs> so you do, you know, you kind of find yourself in cool, 
cool places. The Power Rangers has actually opened a lot of doors for me. Like I've never, I've gone to so many castings, they're like, you're a Power Ranger? And I got a call back, you know, the casting agent was blown away by it. Or asking you for pictures. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I stopped doing like TV and film, not boo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so go back. <laughs> um, I just did not like auditioning at all. I, I couldn't stand it. I love to act, but the audition process is very grueling and you have to have a certain temperament that I just was not blessed with. <laughs> um, so I still do voiceover and I still do commercials and every now and then. And um, I'm writing a children's book and I'm a mama. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of with Kat in that it's very hard to serve two masters, you know? So, um, you know, I, I, I didn't want to do the auditioning process either. You know, one thing I, I, I learned and understood right away is I knew that I got really lucky. You know, I was not an actor. I don't know how to act. They liked my martial arts skills, and I happened to be in the right place at the right time with the proper skills that they were looking for. And with his face. <laughs> Well, it was more than that. I saw his audition. But, but you know, but at the same time though, you know, like they had to bring Paul in to like help, help, because they said, oh, we need you three need an acting coach. But it was really just me that needed it for sure. And um, yeah, so you just had to learn to move your neck. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, <laughs> whatever it was, you know, that was not transferring over into like real acting, you know, outside of Power Rangers, you know. Uh, so. You know, I, I knew that right away. So I, I was I was wise and said, I'm gonna open up, take the money I got and open up a business and I open up a martial arts studio and now that's what I do. I run martial arts uh, studios and um, I have a, a studio in LA called uh, Force Balance Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. And um, that's pretty much all I do. I just really teach. nice studio. Really yeah, nice. Thanks. Force Balance, Force Balance BJJ. I'm a creative director at a Los Angeles art studio and I work with some of the top digital sculptors in the world. And I'm living here in Houston, and I've bounced around a lot after the show. I've lived in Vegas, Seattle, Tampa, here, doing sales, doing whatever I can to take care of my family. And Good doing for a you, little bro. bit of writing, hopefully, if I can ever get it all straightened out and put together in some kind of semblance of an order. Yeah. You can do it. Yeah. Do it. I'm Three pages on. a day, man. Okay. Three pages a day. You got Listen, it. Listen, give yourself an hour. That's it, man. You then I'll turn it to two. It. Then three. Anybody want to? Anybody want to be a writer in here? Anybody aspire to be a writer? Anybody currently a writer? Yep. They're writing the, the, they're they're writing the Power down. Ranger movie, the new, the reboot, right? Well, you, you guys got it. You, you know, as a writer, how hard it is to to marshal the discipline, the yeah. requisite discipline to actually do something. Yeah. You got to set a goal for yourself daily, and let somebody else edit your stuff. Don't try to self-edit. Do it, man. If you have a limit, if you have a goal and an editor, in three months you'll have your movie script or your novel. You said something really good yesterday. Where he said, you know, get your get with your friends. Like a lot of people, some people want to act, some people are good at writing, some people are good at directing. If you guys get together and do stuff, and I mean, now you guys have YouTube. Like we didn't have YouTube back then. I mean, I can't even imagine what we would have posted, you know, back then. But I mean, it's like you know what I'm saying. Like it's so much creative energy, and you watch shows, and you guys are so into it, and you're so into the writing. So you're already halfway there. The little things that you pick up on, you know, some people never get that. They never get that in depth into something. So I say, write, 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 write. You know, do it all. I, I love the team up advice because yeah. YouTube should be called You So Lonely Tube. <laughs> because it's usually one person like, I'm lip syncing, you know, to the thing that I like. But really, you if, you, if you get your gang together and you actually take on roles and sw swap it around, nobody has to be the director, but you can share it. And you guys will force each other to finish some stuff. And each thing you finish is another rung, another step on your way towards. Uh, being a creatively fulfilled human being, right. which is happen. awesome. The little girl in the back with the yellow shirt. Alpha. Alpha was uh, usually just a short girl <laughs> or woman. Uh, Alpha's costume was two walks put together. Was I'm it? serious. Her helmet was two Chinese stir fry walks. No <laughs> I swear to God. 
I didn't even know that. Prop, the prop awesome. department extraordinaire. Yeah. That's why she was saying I, I, I all the time is because the thing was full of sesame oil and she's like, <laughs> she meant I got sesame oil in my I, I, I. In my eye. I, I. <laughs> Sorry, Jim. Sorry about that. How much time we got left here, peeps? Anybody gonna watch? Nobody wears a watch anymore. Yeah, we can, we can keep going. We can keep going. What's that? Four, one, one, four. Oh, we've got time. We've got plenty minutes. of time. Cool, man. Any questions? Right here. Oh, it was, it was, it changed dramatically because I, I mean, I was a normal kid going to school, and um, once I got the role, I mean, I was acting before that, but I was like doing little little films. I wasn't doing anything as big as Power Rangers, um, and then I couldn't even go to the mall. I mean, my hair stood out more than my face did. <laughs> Everybody be like, look, there's that hair. <laughs> that hairdo was like a big throwback to the 70s, too. That was like the eight is enough Brady Bunch haircut. I got a lot of, I got a lot of people talking bad about that hair. Hey. Kids with a cause. I do kids with a cause. Children's LA Children's Hospital. Very cool. Idea. Yeah, we did make a wish a lot on the show. Um, Boys and Girls Club. I I went to the Boys and Girls Club. Um, no hate campaign. You know, definitely against any kind of bullying. Yeah. I have a few, but um, the one that's really close to my heart is my friend um, lost her son to liver cancer, and um, when he was he was four and a half, and um, we went. It was a terrible, terrible experience to watch this little angel pass away. But they started a foundation because he loved Bumblebee from um, Transformers. And so they started a foundation called Bumblebee Foundation. And the, all the proceeds go to helping families with children that have pediatric cancer. And it's, um, I'm going to donate some money from this actually towards it. So if you'd like to know more about it, just come and ask me some questions. Um, but yeah, they're a wonderful family. Still gets me choked up because it was hard to get through. <laughs> I mean, you know, cancer is one of those things that is, it just takes so many lives and, you know, takes them away from us. That's why every morning that you're taking a breath is, is a day to, to be thankful that you get to live it. I mean, you think about how many folks that you went to high school with are not with us anymore. And as you get older, it just keeps happening more and more. You keep losing more and more people. So. For in my, in my case, my team and I, we do work with the uh, American uh, Cancer Society and uh, the uh, Breast Cancer Foundation and Make-A-Wish, so. Yeah, I was in Make-A-Wish is the one that I usually yeah. do too. Yeah. I know, it was like, it was very um, life-changing for me to be on this show and like we were really kind of, you know, kids ourselves, and they would bring kids every week, like, you know, for Make-A-Wish and I was like, you know, this is their dying wish. They wanted to meet us, like it was just, I mean, and, and you know, the parents would, they'd come in and we'd play with them and talk to them and then the parents would go, he's been in bed all month and this is the first time he sat up to talk to you guys and you're just like crying. I mean, it was really emotional for us because you don't realize, we didn't realize how sick they were because they were so happy to see us a lot of the times. And it was just, for me, I know I was so thankful to be in a position to make someone smile or to make their day if that was their wish, you know? It makes you slow down. Yeah. And just go, wow. Yeah. I mean, all the, all the Make-A-Wish kids that we yeah. worked with on the show, every single one of them yeah. um, lives in my memory vividly. Yeah, yeah. And we, I mean, we'd meet them and they'd come, like sometimes they'd get to come a couple times and we lost a few. Yeah. That we, it was just hard, hard, hard. But it did make you slow down. It does, man. Yeah. You start worrying. Start They're so brave, too, the kids. Stuff. They're just so brave. And, um, and just watching them, like, they, we learned so much from them. On how, on how to live your life, like with this little boy, Jaron, he was just so, he like with Bumblebee, it, that was his thing, like if he got to meet Bumblebee, and just um, seeing like the excitement of that in a child, and how it just keeps him going, like it keeps them going, because they know they're gonna meet the Power Rangers, or they're gonna meet Bumblebee, or whatever, yeah. So, yeah. I'm gonna cry now. I know, sorry, wow. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to bring it down. Don't bring to be me down. <laughs> <laughs> Where your line is at. Got to cherish every day, though. That's the positive part of it. <laughs> every every day. 
Millisecond. Oh, I have to go. Oh, Millisecond. <laughs> and that's one thing I, I encourage you because you will get so much out of charity work. I don't know if you do it or if you're involved, but if you're not and you, like even if you're in a bad place in your life, giving honestly is the biggest reward and I, I encourage you all to do it. Um, but we're running my as life. fast as we can to survive. It's hard when you have a job and you have yeah. family responsibilities, but I mean, every, in the holidays, my dad, my dad does this, this um, local, uh, the camp, he goes to the county Thanksgiving meal yeah. and he's so proud of himself every day. He, he comes back after this one day and I'm like, pop, that's, that's one day. <laughs> he's like, but I helped people. Like, you should do it every week. And he's like, oh, I'm too busy. <laughs> 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 he's like, no, he's not. <laughs> better to give than to receive. Totally, I man. Yeah. We were talking about, um, I was rapping with one of our attendees yesterday, and you know sometimes when someone offers to do something for you, you know how sometimes it's difficult to accept kindness? To just accept kindness without the implication of, oh, I have to trade you something, or I have to do something back for you. Like, all of us are, I'm sure many of you are really good at giving, but how many of you are good at graciously receiving without any expectation? Yeah. And this is and it's another kind of a loaded question is it's a hard thing. And I, I wrestle with it myself sometimes. Yeah. I'm not trying to freak you out. It's just, it was on my mind yesterday. It's hard to receive kindness. Even a compliment is hard. It is. It yeah. is hard. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know I look good, though. You're hot. You're hot. <laughs> You're hot. You're hot. Accept it. <laughs> Damn good. Are, okay. Any other questions? Where did the hands go? Oh. Yeah. Oh, it was that. That was the worst day. I mean, because I, w I went from being on the movie, working with everybody, and then the cash change. It was a sad day. I mean, I cried. We all cried. It was yeah. very sad. I didn't want to see them go, you know. But then, you know, I had to take <laughs> rain and be the veteran and take all the new rangers in with big opening arms. So it was cool getting to meet new people too. They were nice people, really, they were great. There was just a conveyor belt of rangers in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> you were lucky to not be a ranger, huh? Next. You were like, yes, I'm not a ranger. I get to stay. <laughs> there's some of our, you know, there's some of my castmates that I've worked with in the later seasons. Like every time I see them at events, they're like, hey, remember me, I'm Roger. I'm like, yeah, Rog. Yes, I remember you. <laughs> it's me, Roger. <laughs> oh, I know there's a lot of rangers, but dude, come on. <laughs> it's not Alzheimer's, it's sometimers. I'm like, sometimes I can't remember anything. It, 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 uh, well, I mean, uh, there's, you know, if there's a demand for him, I'm sure they'll keep bringing him There out. is a demand. There's a demand he's for very, him. He is very committed to his fans, I will say that. He is. He's very committed. Yeah. Yep. He's very combative with me. <laughs> 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 he texted me this morning. He's had my phone number for 10 years, but he keeps losing it. <laughs> so Narby texts me, he's like, JDF, what's your phone number? Is that cool? I'm like, again? <laughs> Like, what does a dude, like, dump a phone in a toilet every three months? He changes his number every, like, like, he changes his number all the time. Like, he'll just send it out a text and it'll be like, JDF. I'm like, updated. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess that's the reason, then. That's yeah. so funny, man. What a dork. I mean, a huge, strong, powerful dork. <laughs> it's possible. I mean, we're, we're very much there. There was a show, what did I see? I was watching an American Girl movie with my daughter and there was a commercial for um, a movie about a lesbian couple. And I was like, wow, that's huge. Like it was on, uh, it was on, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I thought, wow, that's a big step. You know, they're showing it to children now. So I think it's possible. It's difficult though because the show is, our show in its original incarnation was for boys and girls 2 to 11, 
You know, and, and if I'm the parent of a three-year-old, I mean, there are some things I don't necessarily what want to be it. impelled to discuss with my child until yes. it becomes something that is more pertinent to their social life. But, I mean, obviously we can all kind of see the way our culture is starting to go. And um, my dad's got married a month ago. Oh, yeah? Yes, they did. Yeah. Rock on, dads. Oh. Yeah. Rock on, dads. I just... <laughs> I think it's, I mean, I think it's great. I think, I think, like he said, you know, everything is, it's, it's going to come, I think, eventually. And I think it's a conversation that, you know, there, I think there are certain conversations that we all need to be exposed to, kids need to have, and things need to be explained, because your best friend could have, you know, two moms or two dads or whatever, you know? Yeah, that's it. It's tough, though. It's tough for networks, and it's tough for producers, and it's tough to kind of be the one to, to do why that. Can't we, why can't we have this discussion about fossil fuels? <laughs> yeah, no right. kidding. Why can't we get cold fusion in here before, <laughs> you know? Tonight on a very special Family Ties. <laughs> you you, you, can, you do know you what state born you're born in, right, Paul? I'm just saying. Ties. You do know family what city Family Ties, really? <laughs> That's the best you could come up with? Eight is enough, Family Ties. <laughs> No. no. Let them figure it out on their own. Right. My daughter was just in school, and um, some mothers were like, oh, your daughter was saying you're a Power Ranger, the Pink Power Ranger. And I was like, oh. And they said, you're going to be Pink Power Ranger for Halloween. And I said, no. And they said, you're a pink, the Pink Power Ranger. Right. Lily's like, she was. They, they did not believe her. That is awesome. I know. My <laughs> nieces and nephew, throughout the years, they've, been, like, they've had to get proof. Like, they'll take a picture with me, and they'll be like, you know, post on my wall on Facebook. They don't believe me. And they're so tortured by it. Like, when I first found out that I was going to be doing this, uh, I had some friends at church, and actually the gentleman who runs the whole thing, I know through my church, and he was talking about the convention, which is how I found out about it, and was able to come down here. And I was telling people at church, I'm like, oh, yeah, I work with these guys. I'm going to be at the show. I'm going to be there. I'm going to be at a, you know, on the panel and doing all this. And they're like, oh, okay. They came in on Friday. Oh, you were serious? You're really here? I'm like, guys, what have I been talking about for months? Yes, I really did this stuff. Dude, my favorite thing about getting recognized by fans is when there's a, like a three or four year old <laughs> walking with a parent at the grocery store and the kid's like, and then they see me and they're like. <laughs> but the mom, mom is thinking, oh, I gotta get the laundry detergent. And then I, I look at the kid and I'm all. <laughs> and the kid's like. And that's her. And then they're like, as soon as I'm gone, I, I look right. at the, the kid like, I'm out there. Mom's like, shut up. I've got to get the laundry detergent. Right. Kid's like, someday <laughs> I'm going to get him. No, the best reaction, though, was when like, they look at you and they're like, that realization comes over their face and either they start crying oh. or like, they're like, oh, you're really real and like terrified of you. Totally. Or, yeah. or then they ask you like a thousand questions. It's one of the two. <laughs> right, when you're gone, like you're like, oh, they're when you're me. when you're an actor, like oh, the, the question, the, yeah, I'm, mom, mom, <laughs> can you? Sorry, mom. Yeah, no. <laughs> the funniest, the funniest thing people say to us, and this happens all the time, is, hey, aren't you that guy? <laughs> Why, <Well>, yes, <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> they don't really know. Or people think you went to school together. That, that's what I got. You know? That's what I got a lot. Dude, yeah. I, get, I was like, you kicked my butt in eighth grade. <laughs> or I no, asked, we went I asked after people if I, together. I owe them money. Like, oh, man, I'm sorry about what I did to your sister, man. And they're like, you dated my sister? <laughs> right, I always get that. You look like, you look like some, this girl. Did, did people tell you you look like somebody? And I'm like... No. <laughs> I got a familiar face. I just want like, to keep going. It's always when you have like no makeup, your hair is in a ponytail. Like, you know, I'm not giving it away. If people are like, <laughs> yeah, I don't where do it. I? I'm like, hey, if, if you figure it out, I'll be in aisle three. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I will not give it away. I'm like, well, yes, actually, I'm a 13th degree black belt. You know. 
we're just all trying to just get our shopping done. Do your friends, be like, when they do find out, like, they get mad at you? They're like, why didn't you tell me? Totally. And I'm like, what was I supposed totally. to be? Like, hi, I'm Karen Ashley. Yeah. Aisha, the Yellow Power Ranger? Like, it's not <laughs> like, like it's tuberculosis. Not like, it's something you have to warn people about. Yeah. <laughs> or what if you tell them and they're like, no, that's not it. That's not what I remember you <laughs> See, that's why I don't no, tell them. Yeah. No, no, that's not it. <laughs> oh, Aaron Coney, why? Why? They get mad. They get mad. Yeah. It didn't come up. Like childhood heroes did not come up in from, any of our conversations. From now on, 4 p.m. is the talk about myself hour. No matter where you're at, just like stop, stop. and talk about yourself. <laughs> oh, well, I mean, I find it personally humorous to say that I'm Spider-Man or Superman or whatever. But, you know, it's just a fat joke. Lex Luthor. Lex, Lex Luthor. <laughs> Somebody in the elevator, oh, the guys with the, uh, there was some guys with some really elaborate, uh, uh, like, head costumery in the elevator, and they were really tired after working the convention all day, and one of them asked me if I was Mr. Clean. <laughs> I was like, yeah, yeah, I really kind of let myself go since the commercial started in 1960. <laughs> Mr. Clean in case you haven't noticed, is now a CG character, right? So, but they still have the human Mr. Clean, but he kind of plays the husband in the kitchen with the wife. And then, you know, CG Mr. Clean comes in, he's all ding! And the husband's got his shirt, the white shirt, and he's kind of like, yeah, that's, that's my digital Mr. Clean. It's pretty funny. No, I'm not Mr. Clean. Boy, that's for sure. Mr. Dirty. <laughs> we only got a few minutes left. How long are we here? Till two? We have like, like three minutes left. Three yeah. minutes. Couple Last more questions. questions. Last chance. Last yeah, chance, chance, cafe. Here we go. Crush reunion? Wow, you went way back. <laughs> well, they'll, they'll be reuniting at my wedding next year. <laughs> They're invited. I don't think so. <laughs> Be like, uh, ex former Power Ranger, former pop star, becomes a pop star again. Nah. <laughs> yeah, Crush is opening up for Expose. Yeah, right? <laughs> It'll be like on a 90s tour. <laughs> One more? One more? Anyone? Yep. The Megaforce reunion? Yes, I did. <laughs> I thought it was disrespectful to invite a lot of people and not really invite them, but whatever, it's months ago. Um, it is what it is. I always felt like if we did a reunion, like I said before, it'd be cool if, if it was a reunion. Like people want to see Mighty Morphin cast together. You know, not this one from this one and this, you know, like I think that's a reunion or you want to see Turbo or you want to, you know. But Austin's fat. <laughs> well, I mean, not next to me, but. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that, that's a tough question. I mean, yeah. given that there's 17 busloads of Power Rangers, I mean, where does it end? I mean, yeah. how? Try, that, that's like trying to get a quorum going in Congress. <laughs> it's like practically impossible. I mean, I understand that y'all weren't happy with how it went down, but. From their perspective, I mean, you're looking at a stadium full of people you got to try and book for this show. Like, I don't know but if I can... I, my it problem is better. that they don't listen. They did not listen to what the fans wanted. It was right. not about that. They're not, they're not yeah, doing it for true. the fans. That's true. And, that, and we, we wanted to do it for the fans. Um, and, yeah, so... Speaking of the fans, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much, Thanks Houston. Thank you. Awesome. Hey.
Hey guys, we love we're you. Doing, uh, we're going now to do the uh, photo op. So if you haven't gotten your tickets for the photo op, you should go do that real quick. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. yeah. We'll if be you doing paid photo ops and then we're signing also. Yeah. Little yeah. Little yeah. Signing so come well. back and see us if you haven't already. We'd love to meet you.